you all have. But when you're at tribulation, when you suffer, and you can give that something real, that's what that's what we need. And that is the evidence of our redeemed life. Let me ask you a question. Let me ask you a question. If you know the account of Paul and Silas in Philippi, when they were beaten and thrown into jail, deep as dark as part of the jail, thrown in a dungeon, chained to the wall. And if you don't know the story, go to Acts 16 and read it, because you need to know the story. Because it says around midnight they're praying and they're singing praises. Praises. They're singing praises to God. They have unjustly been beaten and locked up. They're in pain. And God shook the earth. He shook the earth, and it says that the, their stairs, the flew off, chains, the chains flew off, the bars of the cell flew open, but not just on their cell, on all the cells around them. Right? Because when God blesses you, I'm going to tell you, that blessing will overflow. It will overflow and touch everybody around you. But the jailer came up to Paul and said, what must I do to be saved? Because he was worried about being killed when we release prisoners, all of a sudden be free. My question is, why did the jailer ask Paul, what must I do to be saved? Because of the evidence of his redeemed life. Because of the evidence of a redeemed life. Yeah. I want to tell you something. I can promise you this. None of the other prisoners were singing the praise of God. None of the other prisoners were showing joy in the midst of this most horrible situation. A, hard, a situation so hard and hard that we can barely conceive of. And yet here they are rejoicing. The jailer saw something in them that set them apart from everybody else that he had ever seen. When was the last time somebody came up to you and said, what must I do to be saved? We struggle so hard to go out and share the gospel. On the day of Pentecost, the people came to them to find out what was going on. Because something was going on. Something different than they knew or understood or experienced was going on. There should be something in your life that the people out in the world have not experienced, don't understand, and they need to come and say to you, how can this be? And you'll say, because of the Holy Spirit. Okay, I said that the fruit of the Holy Spirit is a fruit. Yes. It's not nine fruits. It is a fruit. It's kind of like a jewel with many facets, right? They're inseparable. This joy that we're talking about is indelibly linked to the following fruit, the peace. Right? Yeah. And by the way, you lose one, you're going to lose them all. It's not like, like you can lose the banana. Right? It's funny, because when I was working, I used to, when my mother was still alive, I talked to her every day from her, and I remember what she was saying, I remember one morning talking to her. She sounded kind of down. I said, what's the matter? She said, I just lost all my fruits. <laughs> she had gotten upset about something, and she knew that because of that one was gone, all of them were gone. gone. That's, that's true. Okay. So if you lose your joy, you're not going to have peace. And if you don't have peace, I promise you, you're not going to have joy. And if you don't have love, that person, you're not going to have anything. It's okay. It's only one 